Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Howard Look. I'm the founder and CEO of Tidepool. I'm joined by Brandon Arbeiter, our uh, VP of Product and Business Development. And we also have with us Dr. Saleh Adi from uh, the UCSF Madison Clinic for Pediatric Diabetes. And uh, he'll be uh, saying a few words as well. We're really excited that you've uh, chosen to join us today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. And we're also very excited about the progress we've made at Tidepool over the last three years. Uh, we were founded with a very simple purpose, which is to create great free software that helps the entire diabetes community. So I'm gonna turn it over to Brandon, who's gonna talk you through what we'll be reviewing today. Thank you very much, Howard. And thank you everybody for joining. So our purpose for today is to give an introduction to Tidepool for clinicians. And we're gonna start with some basic information about Tidepool, who we are, what we're doing. And then we're gonna answer some of the burning questions that we get all the time. There are frequently asked questions. Next, we're gonna dive right into an overview of our software and some real demos. We'll look at some real data and we'll see what it's like to really upload data. Then we're gonna take a step back and say, okay, if I'm a clinician and I wanna get started with Tidepool today, how do I do that? So we'll show you how to get started. Next, we're gonna introduce a new resource for clinicians that we just launched last week. And so we'll show you where to find that. And then we're gonna introduce Dr. Saleh Adi, who will talk about UCSF's use of Tidepool in their clinic. At the end of today's session, which we expect to be about 50 to 60 minutes, we'll open up for Q&A so that people can ask any questions that they want. In fact, there is a chat feature on the YouTube channel, and so you can type in your questions as we go, and we'll come back and answer them. Howard, do you wanna talk a little bit about Tidepool and what we're doing here? Certainly. So Tidepool is unlike uh, some of the other companies that you uh, may be familiar with in the diabetes space. Uh, first and foremost, we're a nonprofit, and we made that very decision very explicitly because our goal and our mission is to help the diabetes community and not to seek profits. And so we always try to make decisions that are in the best interest of both the person living with diabetes and the clinician and care teams that are taking care of that person. We're based in California. Our office is here in San Francisco, but we also have employees around the world. And one thing that's notable is that we all have a very personal connection. Of our uh, 12 employees, uh, nine actually live with type one diabetes, and two of us have, uh, sorry, three of us have children with type one diabetes. And so uh, it's very important to us that uh, we succeed in this mission, and we feel like we've made great progress over the last few years. Um, we take very seriously the notion that patients own their own data. So we'll talk about that a little more later, but one thing you'll see is that uh, at all points, uh, we make sure that the person living with diabetes understands that they own their own data. So our job, our mission, is to liberate that data from diabetes devices, and Brandon will describe all the devices that we work with, and then make sure that that data is easily accessible in intuitive and actionable ways for you as clinicians and for people living with diabetes. Thanks, Howard. Let's talk about our frequently asked questions. So one question that we hear a lot from clinicians is how much does this cost? How much does it cost for me? How much does it cost for my clinic? How much does it cost for my patients? And the answer to that is it's free. Tidepool is free for people living with diabetes. Tidepool is free for clinicians who want to use Tidepool software to help provide better care for their patients. So you do not have to pay any money for this. This is a free software. It's kind of like signing up for Facebook. It is free. So the next question that we get, and this makes a lot of sense given that our software is free, is how on earth does Tidepool make money? The Tidepool platform not only services people living with diabetes and their clinicians, it also has a function with diabetes research. And there are researchers all over the country and device companies who are also doing research that actually use Tidepool's platform as a paid service to help them do research that wasn't possible before. So they're using a lot of the same features that you'll be using, uploading data, storing data, but then they take advantage of the backend platform as well. 
So that's a service that actually generates revenue for Tidepool and allows us to provide software for free to you and your patients. Oh, this is, I think, our favorite question. Who owns the data? So the answer to this is very simple. The patients own their data. And that means the data that comes off of my devices as a diabetes patient is data that I own. And I should do whatever I want with that data. So Tidepool, uh, just to make it very clear, doesn't do anything with that data that the patient doesn't explicitly authorize. The patient owns their data. What about HIPAA and FDA? Howard, do you want to talk a bit about HIPAA and, and FDA? Thanks, Brandon. Absolutely. One of the things that's really important to us is that as we deliver our software, we do it in a way so that you and your patients can be assured that we're following all applicable regulations. So we are HIPAA compliant, meaning we comply with all privacy, security, and breach notification rules. We also enter into business associate agreements with clinics that require that. And if you're interested, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll have contact information at the end. Typo is also registered and listed with the FDA. If you're interested, I've included our designation here. And Typo complies with all applicable FDA regulations, uh, including the quality system regulation. The other thing that's notable is that all of our documentation is available openly. And if you're interested, you can find all of that at tidepool.org slash documents. Thank you. So this is our last frequently asked question. What devices do we support? And I'll tell you right off the bat, Tidepool's strong point is with insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitors. And you can see here a list of the pumps and CGMs that we support. It is just about every major pump and CGM available in the United States today. We also support a handful of blood glucose meters, including the Bayer Contour line, the Freestyle Light and Freestyle Freedom Light, and the Vario IQ. There are a few more meters that we support. The full list is available at tidepool.org slash devices, and we always keep it updated there. So as we continue to add new devices, you can follow along at tidepool.org slash devices. Okay, great. Now we're gonna dive right into demos. And we're gonna start with using the Tidepool uploader. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So I've logged in here to Dr. Sally Seastar's account. And this is uh, one of the tools that you will be using in your clinic. There are a couple of different things we can do with the Tidepool uploader. One is to add new patients, add new patient profiles. And the second is to upload. So we'll take a look at both of those. First, let's pretend that somebody, uh, a patient is coming into the clinic, and this is a patient we've seen before, and they're already in the Tidepool system. We can just find them here. So we can find Jill Jellyfish, for instance. And if we wanted to upload data for Jill Jellyfish, we just click Next. But what about if it's a patient we haven't seen before or someone we haven't added to the Tidepool system? How long does that take? Well, let's click Add New. And let's go ahead and add them. So today we're going to add Dolores Dolphin. We can also put in Dolores's medical record number and her email address. The benefit of adding the email address, and this is something we strongly, strongly encourage, is that Dolores will then get an email at home inviting her to take ownership of her Tidepool account. That means that she can access her data at home and continue to engage with it, and she can continue to upload her devices from home. So once we've created Dolores' profile, now we get to choose her devices. So Dolores uses a Dexcom, a tandem, and a Bayer Contour Next Meter. Let's click Done. Finally, we set the time zone. This allows Tidepool to read the device on the time and actually go back and fix any time gaps caused by daylight savings or travel. 
So I'll do a quick demo. Just going to upload a Bayer Contour Next Meter. And we'll do this a little like a cooking show. I won't show you the whole thing, but I will tell you that device upload times do vary. Now that we've created Dolores' account, it is actually there forever. So the profile information is saved, and it will be there the next time you want to log in and see the, uh, and upload for Dolores. Now I'm going to go ahead and change my screen over to the Tidepool web view, which is where you will be viewing Dolores' data. OK. So when you, as a clinician, log into Tidepool, this is what you're going to see. I know what you're thinking. This is an empty list. Well, that's right. And it's empty because in case your patient is looking at this list with you, we didn't want to expose everybody's name in your clinic. Now, if you are looking at this by yourself, you can click Show All and see everybody in your clinic and then find whose data you want to look for. But if you're sitting there with a the patient, let's just go back and hide this data. And let's search for Jill Jellyfish. Now we're loading Jill Jellyfish's data from Tidepool's secure HIPAA compliant cloud. And I'm going to walk you through the screens that we have in Tidepool. This first one is called the basics. And let's start by looking at the left side. We can see Jill's blood glucose distribution. And below that, her average daily carbs that she announces through her insulin pump. Her basal bolus ratio, both the percentages as well as the units. And her average total daily dose. Now, if you're a doctor who likes to see daily dose per kilogram, you can actually just type in Bill's weight and click Calculate. And then we go ahead and show you the total daily dose per kilogram. Now let's take a look at the right side of the screen, where we get a very quick view of how often Jill is checking her blood sugar readings, how often she's bolusing, and how often she's changing her infusion sites. We also have a glimpse of how often she's using the temp basal or suspend features on her pump. Let's dive into one of these calendars a little further. Let's look at bolusing. So not only do we see how many boluses she's doing per day, but we can also filter on any of these bolus types. So we can see when she's using her calculator boluses and when she's not or that she's only used the extended bolus feature one time in the last three weeks. You might find that there's a data point here that is worth more conversation, and maybe you want to dig in a little deeper. Any day on the Tidepool calendar, you can click on. And that takes us to the daily view. This is one screen that shows all of Jill's data coming together. We can see Jill's CGM readings and the readings from her blood glucose meter towards the top. We can also see Jill's boluses and her carbohydrates. The carbohydrates are there in the yellow circle. And then if we hover over the blue bar, we can see how much insulin was delivered in the bolus. Now, on this particular day, Jill had a few interesting boluses. Here's one with a little blue hat that she actually overrode her suggested bolus. The pump had suggested no insulin, and Jill went ahead and delivered one unit of insulin. And we can actually see that her blood sugar went low about two hours later. We can also see the extended boluses through this bolus icon with the tail. And here's an example where Jill actually interrupted her bolus. So these different kinds of boluses that might become interesting in your conversation with your patient are all represented graphically, intuitively um, in the tide pool display. At the bottom of the screen, we have Jill's basal rate for the day. And that includes both suspended basals and temp basals. So here we can see Jill used a temp basal of 120% for an hour. So that's the daily view. Oh, Howard was just pointing to me that there's one other thing I wanted to show you. You can go ahead and add a note for Jill. So for instance, you might want to congratulate Jill on using her 
extended bullets feature. That note now shows up in Tidepool, and she can see it later, or you can see it together the next time she is in her clinic visit. Now let's go take a look at the weekly view. The weekly view provides a, a glimpse of blood glucose readings. We have the last two weeks of data on the left side in reverse chronological order, and then midnight to midnight along the top. You can see all of Jill's blood glucose readings, and you can even scroll down if you want to change the two weeks that are in view. Now, just like with the basic screen, if there's any reading here that's concerning to you, you can just click on it to get the details. Okay, now we're going to head over to the trends view. The trends view aggregates Jill's CGM data into a few different components. So first, let's talk about what we're looking at here. The dark purple dots in the middle represent the median of Jill's blood glucose reading for any particular 30-minute time period. The dark purple bar around that represents 50% of Jill's readings during that 30-minute time period. That tells us where Jill's blood sugars are most of the time. The light purple around that shows us the 80% of Jill's blood sugar readings. And if we like, we can actually click on 100% and a lighter bar will appear outside of it. So we can scroll back through time and see if there are any trends that we've seen in Jill's data that might need to be addressed. And I can actually see one here off the bat. It looks like after breakfast time, Jill's blood sugars are great. Her median is 99 or 100. But then it comes up and it actually is hovering about 170 or 180 for most of the rest of the afternoon. So this might be an opportunity to dig deeper into Jill's corrections or her basal rates and have a discussion about why Jill's blood sugars are as high as they are. You can also filter for specific days of the week. You can turn off weekends or turn off weekdays or if Jill has soccer practice on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can just look at those days. The last thing I want to show you in Tidepool Web is device settings. So this shows all of Jill's pump settings in one place at one time. This view is a standardized view. So regardless of what pump Jill is using, the device settings look the same, and so you don't have to acclimate yourself to a bunch of different views. This is actually something that's true of all of Tidepool's screens. Tidepool screens, the magic of the Tidepool platform, is all of the data comes together, and regardless of which devices your patient is using, the data analysis is consistent and easy for you. Okay, so that is reviewing data with Tidepool. Now let's go ahead and look at Tidepool Mobile. So Tidepool Mobile, uh, right now we're showing you the screenshot uh, from the iPhone. Tidepool Mobile can be used both for iPhone or for Android. The reason I'm showing you the iPhone version is actually because there's one feature for iPhone that isn't quite possible yet on Android. And that is the ability to connect to Apple Health to continuously and automatically upload Dexcom data. So the patient can put Tidepool Mobile onto their iPhone, connect it to their Dexcom data, and you never have to upload a Dexcom again. The primary purpose of the Tidepool Mobile app is actually to contextualize the patient's day. So here we see that Jill entered a note that says site change, high blood sugar. And then it goes into her news feed and it will show up in Tidepool Web the next time she's visiting with you. We've used these hashtag mechanisms where patients can create their own hashtags, things that happen often in their own therapy. And then instead of taking time to write out exactly what happened, they can just type a hashtag and click post. Okay, 
So that wraps up Tidepool demos. Now I want to talk getting started with Tidepool. Here are a few here are a few links that you are going to want to keep track of. Everything is centered at tidepool.org. So we have tidepool.org slash uploader, tidepool.org slash downloads, tidepool.org slash signup, and tidepool.org slash login. Tidepool works on Mac and Windows computers. At this point, you do need to use Google Chrome browser in order to use Tidepool web. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. I'm going to open a new browser window here. And we'll go to this first link, tidepool.org slash uploader. So the first thing that you want to do is get the Tidepool uploader. Now, to show you the process, I'm going to go ahead and remove the Tidepool uploader so that you can watch me add it. So from tidepool.org slash uploader, I'm going to click Get Started. And remember, this is happening in the Chrome browser, which allows me to add the Tidepool uploader. I got a little pop-up that asked me if I want to add the app. I said yes. That is it. The installation is done. And we can see it here. The next thing we want to do is get the Tidepool driver. So I'm going to go to tidepool.org slash downloads. And you'll see there's two options here, one for Windows, one for Mac. You only have to download this driver once, install it, and then you're good to go. Now the Tidepool uploader has what it needs to be able to communicate with any devices that you might plug in. Next, we're going to go to tidepool.org slash signup. And we'll click that we are a healthcare provider. Now here what we're doing is we are asking for some basic information about you so that we know how to flag your account as a clinician account. This only takes a moment. And then we give you a heads up that on the next page is where you'll be creating your Tidepool account. And within the next business day, we will follow up with you to let you know that your Tidepool account has been flagged as a clinician account. That gives you the ability to create unlimited patient profiles. So this is where you will create your Tidepool clinician account. And then you'll click sign up. After that, you'll get an email verification and you know that process from every other web property. And then when it's time to log in, you go to tidepool.org, tidepool.org slash login. And here you can log in. Now, my recommendation here is that you actually mark this as a bookmark. Click the star on the right side and click done. Now, Blip, which is Tidepool's web app, will be stored in your bookmarks. There are more resources for clinicians, including tidepool.org slash clinic, where we have a few, a few videos that actually go over a bunch of the things that we went over in today's webinar. So go check out tidepool.org slash clinic, and you can find those videos and documentation for your IT department. You can also visit support.tidepool.org for how-to articles on dozens of things that you can do with Tidepool, whether it's specific instructions for uploading any device or just how to create your account. And finally, we are here for you. Email us at support at tidepool.org. Now, it is with great pleasure that I introduce Dr. Saleh Adi, the director of the Madison Clinic for Pediatric Diabetes here in San Francisco. Super, thank you, Brandon. Uh, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to be here and speak to you, and thank you all for joining us. So, um, we've been using Tidepool for over a year now, and actually we have almost uh, about 400 patients, uh, that's about half of our patients in the clinic, signed up and uploading their devices to the Tidepool platform. Uh, this has had a tremendous impact on all aspects of our workflow. 
Uh, first of all, as you uh, hopefully saw and, and, uh, and appreciated, uh, how easy it is to upload all of the devices in the clinic. It's a much simpler and, 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 and easier process uh, that the front desk staff find it uh, very easy and, and uh, friendly to do. The second is uh, it also makes viewing the data much easier and faster in the clinic with the patients as well. All of the devices data are uh, compiled together in one view and uh, what uh, Brandon actually didn't show you, just showed you one day, but you can sc scroll back and forth, right to left, and just go continuously throughout the entire uh, week, uh, moving from one day to another. The uh, second thing that we're actually trying to do uh, and push people to download their devices at home, because this process is now super easy and anyone can do it on any computer. All you have to do is just log on, you have internet, uh, access and go to Chrome web browser, log on to your account and upload your devices. Uh, that actually is now happening more and more. I would say more than half of our patients who are signed up for tight pool are uploading their devices at home, either the day before they come to clinic visit or, or that morning before they come. That makes it a lot easier for our front desk staff and take that away from them. So it's faster uh, check-in process and we see them much uh, quicker when they come to clinic. And what I love more about it is the fact that when patients are uploading at home, they're actually seeing their data and they can view it even before they come to clinic. So they're more engaged with their diabetes data and with diabetes regimen, and they can actually see their own trends. And sometimes they come to clinic with their own recommendations and observations, and we discuss those together. Um, and then furthermore, uh, the, the process of uploading at home has also allowed us to view the data and make adjustments in their insulin regimens more frequently in between the clinic visits. So they don't have to wait until they come every two or three months. They can actually do it every two to three weeks and then review it and make some adjustments on their own, or they can tell us that they uploaded. Uh, I ask most of our, my patients with, you know, most of them are children to, um, actually upload their devices once a month. Uh, so even though they come to clinic every three months, but we like to review their data every three months and make adjustments as we go. And um, finally, the uh, process of uploading at home has also made it much simpler and easier for us to actually do televisits. We're doing more televisits uh, for those who have devices that they can upload at home and they have computers and internet access that they've shown that they're able to do it at home. I make it on a, a prerequisite for patients to come to our, uh, to upload their devices at home to participate in a televisit. And that is actually going well. And that segment of the population is growing. And we're doing more and more televisits. And that is uh, much uh, more effective and efficient. Our televisits or in clinic visits are now down to 30 minutes as opposed to 45 minutes because we can view the data much easier and simpler. And by the way, we upload data on everyone. So uh, every, every patient who comes in, no matter what device they have, we have to upload their data and review it with them in the clinic. Uh, and then finally, for satellite clinics as well, uh, we do quite a few satellite clinics with very little admin support. So, you know, I go to a satellite clinic with either one nurse or one CDE, it may not be a nurse, uh, and we don't have admin support to download their devices. So they can download it at home uh, and then come back to clinic the next day and then we can have their quick visit for 30 minutes. Uh, finally, um, I would offer that, um, you know, we've been using this, we've been uh, sort of piloting it along the way and it's, it's getting better by the day. And I would offer um, uh, my email and my contact information for anyone who is uh, willing to try it or is wanting to try it or you have any problems or questions to email me and we're happy to share our experience with you. Thank you, Saleh. That All was right. very generous of you. Thank you. Thank you for your time today, Saleh. Dr. Adi, everybody. Okay. And I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the folks at JDRF. Uh, they have been supportive of us from the beginning and they recently provided a grant that allows us to get started in providing free accounts to clinicians all over the country. So thank you to JDRF. Now, Howard, I've seen you really busy on the other computer. Uh, 
fielding some questions. Are there any questions that came up that, that we should talk about? Uh, sure, we should uh, just quickly go through some of the questions that were asked. Uh, Dr. Pinsker asked, uh, is this, does this work on Mac and PC? Uh, and the answer is yes, it works on both Mac and PC. Uh, later, Mark from LA also asked, um, why Chrome? We require that you use the Chrome browser in order to run Tidepool, and the reason for that is that it was the most expedient browser for us to develop and test for. We do hope to support other browsers in the future, but Chrome is a very popular browser with very wide support, and uh, so we encourage you to use Chrome uh, to access Tidepool for now. I'll add to that that the Tidepool uploader is actually a Chrome app, so it is developed in the Chrome platform, and we will be releasing a version of the Tidepool uploader that is not dependent on Chrome, that's still a few months away. For the time being, uh, we, do, we do require Chrome in order to use the Tidepool software. Jennifer asked a question, uh, thank you very much, about copying notes, uh, and I'll extend that to other data from Tidepool into your EMR system. Um, currently, Tidepool is not directly integrated with uh, EMR systems like Epic or Cerner. Um, however, it is in use at many clinics that do use those EMRs. And what uh, the clinicians tend to do is copy and paste notes and data from within the Tidepool web app into the chart notes for their EMR. And uh, we're also working on functionality that will make copying that data much simpler in the future. Um, Marcella asks a question, from an administration point of view, are reports ready to be used, meaning uh, knowing who from our clinic has typo versus who has not? Uh, I think I understand the question, Marcella, but feel free to clarify more in chat if you need to. So currently, uh, within a clinic, um, there are a couple of ways you can set up to use typo. As some clinics choose to have a single clinic login that everybody shares. Other clinics prefer that each clinician have their own login. We'll support either model, and uh, the sharing model then allows the end user to share the data with their clinician. If we, we, it's probably easier for you as a clinic to use a single clinical login, and that way uh, you can see all of your patients on a single dashboard. If there are multiple logins, then each of those clinicians will see their own patients. If that didn't answer your question, feel free to uh, clarify in uh, chat what you were asking. You can also feel free to email us at support at tidepool.org, and we can talk more specifically about your uh, specific custom, your specific clinic setup and how we can, how the type pool system is, can be best suited for your needs. Uh, Mark from LA uh, asked that we please change the clinician note to a different color so they stand out from patient notes. That's a terrific suggestion. Thank you so much. And we'll uh, definitely add that to the list. We'll wait a couple of minutes just to see if there's any other questions. And while we're waiting, uh, remind you that you can go to tidepool.org slash clinic, and there are links there to all of the information that we've presented today, as well as some videos that we've made that will help walk you through the Tidepool experience. All right, well, it looks like there are no further questions, so thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to join us for this webinar. If you have any further questions, please feel free to send us an email at uh, clinics at tidepool.org. If you're already using Tidepool and you'd like help from our support team, feel free to send an email to support at tidepool.org and someone will get back to you as soon as possible. Also, when you sign up for your Tidepool clinician account, we are share with you the Jill demo account so that you can explore real data. Terrific. Brandon, thank you so much. Thank you, Howard. And thank you all for joining us. Have a great day.